Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Let's Get Loud podcast. This is a solo podcast episode with A. All right, everyone, I have a little bit of a life update for you and a little bit of a just like a little chat, you know? I do want to say, I feel like last week's solo podcast episode, I came on and I was like, who is that person? It was very negative. And, you know, I was really impacted by some comments um, on the internet about the way that I was choosing to live my life, which is ridiculous. And it doesn't usually get to me, but I actually was in a lot of pain last Friday. Um, I am struggling with a little bit of a pinched nerve situation in my neck shoulder area. Guys, I am finally getting somewhere. I was able to see a chiropractor on Monday. And now I know that a chiropractor is quite a controversial topic. Some people are obsessed. Some people don't believe in it at all. Anyways, I needed to start figuring it out. Um, and I, you know what, a chiropractor is there. Listen, sometimes we take certain professions and we just like put people on a pedestal, doctors, lawyers, teachers, chiropractors, which are doctors. Um, and it's, they're also humans. So like, you can't say, Oh, the chiropractors and every chiropractor is amazing. We, they're humans with opinions and experiences. And so I really live my life not by people's status or, you know, the letters beside their name or, you know, I truly believe that there are so many people qualified to be educators that don't have an education degree. And I'll tell you something, just because you do have an education degree certainly doesn't make you a great teacher. Anyways, wow. Um, my whole point is like, I, I don't say I'm not impressed by titles, but I really just look at people as human beings with opinions and experiences and education. That's a part of their experience and speak with them and hear what they have to say. Anywho, so I went to see the chiropractor. I loved her immediately, super young. Um, she was cautious like me. So she wasn't quick to just like, you know, prescribe me medicine or well, to send me to the doctor to get medicine, my family doctor or, um, send me for an x-ray or even do an adjustment right away. She was like, okay, let's like start slow and then ease our way into it. I'm like, respect. Like, I really like this. So anyways, I'm a little bit of a stubborn person when it comes to, or I have been in the past. I'm learning now that apparently I'm not immune to things, but I'm quite a stubborn person when it comes to taking medicine and getting any kind of like medical help. But this has been a great experience for me. So anyways, I went to see her on Monday. She did some like taping situation and she did one adjustment and she gave me some exercises, which I've done zero of. Um, and um, I've been icing it and taking medicine. Who knew? Actually, one of my followers on Instagram was like, this is what I use when I have nerve pain. And I'm so grateful for her because that really helps significantly. The, the other stuff I was taking wasn't touching the pain. All this to tell you guys, I was in a lot of pain last Friday when I recorded a podcast. And so I just felt like I wasn't really myself, you know, on Tuesday, I was starting to feel a little bit better. And I went for a walk and I, I messaged Jose and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm starting to feel like myself again. I'm starting to like think about things other than just the pain. So anyone that's listening, who's ever experienced chronic pain, holy moly, I am so sorry. It's exhausting. And I've been so tired. And I think part of it is because I'm not sleeping great. The pain is just, it's like, it's just always there. And so it's almost like I'm not getting in a deep sleep. All this is improving, but, um, I've been tired. I think just dealing with pain is exhausting. So I've been tired and just not myself. Anyways, I'm coming back bigger and better than before. I'm really excited to get back to weightlifting and running. I was really enjoying like increasing my fitness level. I actually, this week took the time within our membership. We're working on the 12 weeks of action. So we're on week two, we're just finishing up week two and week two was all about creating your vision for yourself. And I know it's a little bit of rainbows and butterflies, but, um, it's important. And I started to really think about my vision for myself. And really for me, what, what I want for me in the next year is to optimize my health. And I just really had, you know, those reminders lately of just how important your health is. And when you're not, you're not, you know, reaching your potential, it's impacting you. So anyways, that was kind of a fun full circle moment. So I did that activity with our members I actually have it right here. Um, so we actually have a tool which creating your vision is something people really struggle with. It's something people have a hard time with um, because maybe 
when we've been on a weight loss journey before in the past, no one asked you what your vision was for yourself in the next year. You were just like, what do you mean? We're just getting thinner. That's not what we do at your weight loss. And we want, my whole goal of the 12 weeks of action is to keep people connected and keep them engaged when things get hard because they will get hard. And having an emotional connection to why you want this is huge in that, in, in that situation. Anyway, wow. So I went through my vision. So why don't I share it with you guys? Make it about me. So my vision is to optimize my health. Okay. And then I just started to think about, okay, like what are the things that I could do that would optimize my health? So less fat on my body. I mean, that's just fact. Um, increasing my muscle mass is a huge one for me. Uh, increasing my cardiovascular health. So as great as my walks are amazing, you know, I would, I've been doing a little bit of running before I hurt my shoulder and man, it's been quite a year for me, eh? my foot and then my shoulder. It's just like unacceptable. I'm like, no, absolutely not. So I'm excited. I'm, I just cannot wait to be at full health and just crush it. Anyways, I was running and it was just, obviously it's a different thing when you're running versus when you're walking. And that is going to increase my cardiovascular health. There's actually heart um, problems in my family. My grandfather died at a really young age of a heart attack. And so I just want to keep myself as healthy as possible, as long as possible. Um, another thing I can do to optimize my health is sleep more. So, you know, over the last couple of years, I found that I was not falling asleep right away and just having some disruptive sleep, Neil snoring more. And so really increasing my sleep hygiene is like, so remember when you're doing your vision, your vision is like your overarching, like, I want to optimize my health. And then it's like, okay, what could that look like for you? And then the how part is coming later. Like I'm not at the how part and I just let it flow. I just, you know, maybe your vision for yourself is that you don't obsess over your weight anymore. And then you're like, okay, what would that look like? Maybe your vision for yourself is that food doesn't control you anymore. Maybe your vision for yourself is that you become more physically fit. Maybe it like, what is your vision for yourself? And remember that when we're doing this, oh, I wish I could, I would have printed. I wonder if I can find it quick because I had some prompting questions for people when they were doing this because people were really struggling to come up with guys. I think I'm going to find it here for you. Also, Jose turned our website pink. I'm not sure what, what I think yet guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, what do you think of this pink? She's adding into our things. Okay. So here's your prompting, uh, vision. Who is that person? So imagine yourself in 12 months. Okay. So we're just kind of thinking in 12 months, a year is a great amount of time. So this time next year, going into summer, I want you to just like pause for a second. And like, and like, what are your feelings right now going into summer? Are you like, well, shit, another year that I said, I wouldn't, you know, be this weight. And here I am a burp, a burp, a burp, a boo. this time next year, where do you want to be? Who is that person? What does that person look like? Like, it's okay to say less fat on their body, more muscle. Um, it, it has a different haircut. Like you're allowed to focus on your physical appearance as well. That's okay. What does that, how does, how does she spend her time? So who, how does she spend her time? She spends her time moving her body. She spends her time with her family. She spends her time doing puzzles. She spends her time not working. It's a big one for me. Um, what is her relationship with herself? She doesn't talk shit about herself anymore. She doesn't judge herself anymore. I'm just suggesting things. What does that person do consistently? What does that person do consistently? Think about that. Imagine if you could build this person, what would they do consistently? How would you describe her? Free, happy, light, excited, hopeful, inspiring. How would you describe her? Anyway, so these are just some prompting questions that I created for our members to help them create their vision. All right, so back to me. So my vision for myself over the next year is to optimize my health, okay? I mean, this is a forever vision. This is a forever goal, but I'm just gonna really hyper-focus on this. So reduce alcohol. This is something I've already been working on. It's going really well. Um, more nutrients. So again, I'm not writing in this moment, I'm not writing how I'm gonna do that or what that's gonna look like, but I literally just 
when if my vision for myself is someone that is at optimal health, what do I need to do to get there? Like, what does that person look like? What does she do? Okay. So she has lost some weight. She's increased her muscle. She has increased her cardiovascular health. She sleeps more. She drinks less alcohol. She eats more nutrients. She hydrates herself. Boom. Okay. And so that's my vision for myself. And then I decided to narrow it down for the next 10 weeks to just lose weight, lose weight. Okay. That's my overarching. And I think it, a lot of these things can kind of like, you know, go in together. So that's my goal. So my lag indicator, which is what, um, what thing that is measurable will tell me if I've achieved my goal is the scale goes down. And what are my lead indicators are, those are the things I can do every single day that I focus on the things that I actually want to be consistent with. So I wrote a bunch down, not really important. Anyways, I don't know why we're here, but here we are. I just kind of was sharing with you guys where I'm at and what I've been up to and how kind of this pain has really taken, you know, taken me back a little bit and just, I had to reshift my priorities. No big deal. It's not over. I just, you know, reshift. Anyways, you know what I really wanted to talk to you guys about was something that happened with Alfie. So if you guys are longtime followers or listeners, uh, you guys know that Alfie's brain works differently. So he has a learning difference. He is dyslexic, but he also has slow processing time. It doesn't mean he's slow. It just means his brain works slow. And we call him the sloth. Like that's his like spirit animal. And so that impacted a lot his gross motor skills so for example teaching him to ride a bike was so hard because his brain had to think about moving his pedals steering the thing basically when you throw a ball at him his brain is like shit i gotta catch the ball but it takes a longer time for him to react because he processes slower sometimes you can actually see him thinking it's amazing anyways uh, he's crushing it. You know, we've known this since grade two and he is doing great in school, but he definitely is behind when it comes to gross motor and playing sports. And I just assumed he was never going to be a sporty kid. I really did. But then a couple years ago, he was playing football with some friends and he was like, I want to play football. And I was like, oh gosh, here we go. So we put him in football and it was one of the best things we've ever done. He has grabbed it and run with it and he loves it. He comes home and he watches YouTube videos about football. And I do find that football seems like it's a quite inclusive sport in the sense that like he doesn't like super stand out. Like if I put him in hockey, he would very much stand out. <laughs> you know, so there's some sports that I think you can kind of blend in a little bit better and and football seems to be one of them. So Anyways, he only started last fall. So it hasn't even been a full year of him playing football, but he, in his brain, I don't know why has decided he wants to be a quarterback. Now the quarterback is the coveted position. Everyone wants to be a quarterback and there's only like one of them, you know? So recently he is playing on a spring team and they said, okay, who wants to like throw the ball? And he put his hand up. And so he was kind of working with, you know, five other kids and a coach as the, you know, potential quarterback, it just, you know, he was the one that put himself in, in the, in the running and he did not get chosen, which I am not surprised by. And, you know, when I have a conversation with him about, about it, I say like, how are you, I do it very rationally. Like, how are your skills compared to the other kids? And, and in that moment, he knows, like he knows his skills are not as strong as some of the other kids. He's also playing in a league where the kids are a year older than him. So I'm like, they've been doing it longer, you know, anyways. So he came home and Alfie's a very resilient kid. You know, he, things are hard for him every single day at school and he's different and it doesn't often get to him. Like he's, you know, when things are hard for him, he's not that kid that like cries or is mad. He just like takes it, accepts it, move on. He's very like even keel, which is one of his most incredible strengths. But he came home and he was devastated, you guys. Devastated. And the reason why I'm telling you guys this story is I kind of want to unpack the difference between effort and results. Anyways, I'm getting to it. 
So, and he's also had this experience at school where they all play football at lunch and they pick two captains and then the captains pick the team. Well, he told me that he gets picked last every single day. Tell me that does not break your mom heart. So we've had several conversations like this. And I said to him, you know, you can't control what other people are going to do. All you can control is you and you can choose. Do I want to play football at lunch knowing I might be get picked last or do I want to do something else? And you choose that. So we've had that conversation. He's kind of accepted that. But the day he came home and he was so upset, he said it's it was like he said it was like middle school lunch all over again. And he said, I was standing there and they didn't pick my name. And I thought I'm here too. And when he verbalized that, I felt, you know, he, he doesn't feel seen and he doesn't feel like maybe people are realizing how much work he's putting in. And again, obviously my mom heart broke and it was, it was a, a bunch of things. He was tired. He was cold. He was hungry. Not a good combo when you're having emotions, but you know, he had a shower cry good cry, good long cry. And then I'm thinking there and I'm like, as a mother, do I just break him right down and tell him it's over, buddy? Like, you're never going to be a quarterback. You're never going to be a quarterback. Stop trying. It's not worth it. Like, is that the advice I give my kid to protect him from disappointment? Or do I encourage him to continue to work hard, but not, but make sure that he's not chasing the result? And obviously that's the, the, where I, I got to, and I just spoke to him about how hard he works and that he's the only one that knows how hard he's working and that he cannot control whether he ever becomes a quarterback or not. All he can control is his actions, his attitude, his consistency, and to put his head down and to work at being the best version of himself. And he was just kind of like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, what do you think we could do to, how could we support you in that? And he said, I think, you know, obviously I need to throw a ball more. Um, I'd like to throw a ball 10 times a day. And I was like, amazing. And I had seen this thing on Amazon where it's like a little net and you try to aim for it. I'm like, what do you think of this? He was like, great. And I thought about that conversation and I thought about how so often we're chasing a result and we get frustrated that we're not getting that result and we give up. And maybe it's the fear of disappointment or maybe it's the lack of getting the results so quickly. But the real base core thing that I want him to learn is to be reinforced by himself that he doesn't need external validation to say you're working hard. He knows he's working hard and he's working hard because it's who he wants to be. Do you see what I'm saying here? So often we are working hard for weight loss, but we're doing choices. We're making choices that don't align with who we want to be. No wonder we're getting frustrated and we're looking for that external validation. You know, we're looking for that moment that someone notices we lost weight. And just a reminder, are you doing this for you? Or are you doing this for others? No one cares how big your ass is. You need to do it for you. And my, my like takeaway advice here is for you to, as much as it's so emotional, our weight loss journeys are so emotional. So much of us have so much of our worth tied up in our weight is really just say to yourself, okay, all right. What do I have control over? What are the things I want to be consistent with? How can I set up my environment to facilitate consistency with the things that I've decided that I want to do because they are who I want to be and because they align with my vision for myself and because they will help me achieve this goal that's going to get me closer to my vision. Do you see how we just went full circle there right now? Alvi's vision is to be a quarterback, you guys. Who am I to say that? that will never happen. I'm not going to, and I'm definitely not going to, I'm also not going to promise him that it is going to happen. I'm not going to say, buddy, work hard and they'll pick you next year. I, I can't promise him that. And I can't promise you results either. Okay. But what I can promise you is that if you put your head down and work consistently at the things that will get you closer to your goal, you will get closer to your goal. 
And so that's what we're just focusing on. I'm not telling them if you will or will not get those results. We're just focusing on the every single day things that he can do to be the best little football player you've ever seen. Anyway, guys, so I'll keep you updated on, on his football journey, but oh, that kid, man, what a privilege it is to watch your children grow up and evolve and become, you know, adults and to help mold the way they see the world and the way they're navigating it. It is such an incredible privilege. I mean, it's stressful AF as well, but it is a privilege. He also just told me he wants to play baseball. And I'm like, oh gosh, I don't know if my mom heart can handle putting you in another sport you've never played before. Like he's turning 12 this year. 12? No, 12. He's turning 12. Wow. I mean, some of these kids have been playing baseball since they were five, six. Am I going to really put him in that sport? But he wants to go. And I'm like, okay, buddy, here we go. Anywho. Okay. Wow. That was kind of a long one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Listen, I'm recording this live and I talked to Jose and I was like, would it be okay if we offered um, our listeners just today a free trial? So listen, send me a DM on Instagram, either your way weight loss or my personal Instagram, Alicia underscore YWWL or on Facebook, whatever, send me a DM and I'll send you the link for the 14 day free trial. Listen, if you want to create weight loss for yourself and you are not a member. I, I just don't even understand it. We are two weeks into our 12 weeks of action. Not too late. Next week is when we pick our goals and we actually fill in the template that has our lead indicators and we actually start the doing part. You can easily get all caught up. So if that interests you, just send me a DM and I'll get you that link. It's only going to be open for 24 hours though. So don't wait. All right, everyone have an incredible weekend. And as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening and letting me be vulnerable with you guys. Bye.